It's week 11 in the NFL, and we're in Chi-Town. We'll see the Bears and Ravens square off for just the seventh time, as Chicago looks for their fifth win of the series. All the action's headed your way on EA Sports. First opened way back in 1924, but renovated in 2002. There's a look inside Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. This was the scene a moment ago as the Bears emerged from their tunnel. Ready for football are they, and ready for football are we as the Bears get set to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Bears team entering play. They've been cooking these last couple months, winners of seven of their last eight games. And if you extrapolate that out to a full season, they'd be 14 and two. And anyone in the NFL today would sign up for that. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, they come in playing some decent football, five and three in their last eight games. And they looked awfully good last week and came away with a two touchdown victory. They did have a few reasons for concern defensively, but all in all, they'll take a repeat here if they could get it. short kick from the 14 and able to get this out to the 25 and the Ravens offense set to take over and led by a man still just in his fourth season in the NFL the 2019 MVP Lamar Jackson and I thought it was a really nice performance last week by him three touchdown passes I think that signifies exactly what he was getting done. He did have the one interception. But that's the ratio you say you're okay with, right? If you go three to one, you're going to be pretty happy over the course of the season. And let's face it, he'll never blame the receiver publicly. But behind closed doors, he probably told his agent, hey, what's the deal? I should have had a perfect game. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They run. Devontae Freeman. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one, because to me, when that happens, key guys are out, the next man steps up and plays well, but that starts with the organization itself, all the way through. No excuses for guys being out, finding guys who are capable backups who can step up and play when they need them, and we've seen the results of that. This team knows how to work through things. Jackson now. Swings it out to the flat for Freeman. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. And CD, defensively, you're going against a hot quarterback coming off a three-touchdown game with a victory a week ago. But what's the big key for them to try to slow him down? You ask all the tough questions, don't you, partner? Because with this guy, if you blitz him, he takes advantage of that man coverage and burns you. But if you bring on those extra DBs, he sits back there and does what he wants. To me, it's going to be those DBs. When they catch the ball, big-time tackles really put it on those receivers. This is Freeman on first and 10. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. 
The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. This defense, Charles, really played well in that win a week ago. It was a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to call. That's a very nice game there. A confidence-building run. Love the execution up front. And the way you press the hole, absolutely perfect. On the heels of that good carry by Devontae Freeman, here's first and ten. Now a handoff here to his running back. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Jackson from the shotgun. Well, that's complete to the fullback, Ricard. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position is to actually utilize more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it. He's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put there. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage there, you might have. And that'll be taken in by Andrews for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Ravens take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. A long opening drive, but a very successful opening drive. We call that methodical, I guess, when it takes that many plays. Methodical and almost like a boxing match where you're hitting them with body blows. They can withstand them here. Look, they gave up the touchdown, but you don't feel like a knockout is there. And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs. And I think they're going to at least take a look at this. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review. So they had it right. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead at 7-0. That time, a nine-play drive, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. And the Bears offense making their way out now for their first drive with Justin Fields, the rookie from Ohio State, at quarterback. And if you go by the numbers, he's had a Pro Bowl-type season, and maybe that's even selling him a little bit short. He's the NFL leader in touchdown passes to this point in the year, and with the end of the season not too far away, he's got his guys playing at a very high level. First carry now for David Montgomery. Any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before, that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame, get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Back to Montgomery on second down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. Well, to me, that's taking a big gamble defensively because that alignment you see, that's normally something you see down near the goal line because now if they decide to go play action, something should be open there, and I think open big. So maybe that's something that gets filed away for later. I think without a doubt, you write it down, and if you see that look at a later date, Go ahead and take your shot. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Almost feels like anything you can do, we're going to try and match or do better. We've already seen one touchdown pass from the opposition. They tried to equal it on that throw. They snap it to Fields. 
And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. I know they got the first down, but Brandon, I still don't like the call going for it there. Yeah, yeah they got it. But I would have punted the ball there, played some field position. I mean, it's okay to end drives and kicks, right? You know, the, we've heard that from different guys before. Remember, it kicks either a punt, right? Field goal, or a point after touchdown. It's okay to end it in a kick. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Patrick Queen. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. He's had a fantastic rookie season, made a lot of lovely throws, but that wasn't one of them. Well, we got to give him one, don't we? I mean, with the year he's having, a lot easier for he and his teammates to accept that throw because for the most part, what they've seen, it's been pretty sensational. Lamar Jackson marching back onto the field. And he had the touchdown of the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverage his last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Jackson. Looking left side for Watkins, and he's got him. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And some room to roam now. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Six yards there on the keeper. It's second down. And Jackson going to run again. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson, his second TD of the game and 18th of the year. And the Ravens will extend their lead. Now this defense, so many things to worry about in the red zone area, but you'd have to almost think that Lamar Jackson running the football, that might be number one. It should be number one. And in this portion of the field where things shrink a little bit, because the receivers can't run past anyone because they'll run out of real estate. You should have all eyes on Lamar Jackson when the ball is snapped and try and keep him back in the pocket. Yeah, I don't think that they were surprised he was running it there. They just couldn't stop him, and he ends up in the end zone. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. That time, a six-play drive. And it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And here's Jakeem Grant from his end zone. Now a hit and a loose football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And he will score. Touchdown, Baltimore. James Prochet. His first touchdown on the year. And the Ravens are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And that's got to be so disappointing for a defense. You, know, you force the fumble, think you got a chance at a turnover, and instead, not only do you give up the football, you also give up a touchdown as well. Yeah, you just think to yourself, you've done all the hard work, right? You force the fumble, but when they didn't come up with it, and now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. 
Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that challenge is a successful one. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. That's complete to Mooney. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Flushed out right, and he slings one that's incomplete. They certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. Second and ten, fields again. Deep ball for Goodwin. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. To throw his fields. Flush to his right. And the hook up here to Allen Robinson. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Now that's all about making something happen as a quarterback because instead of forcing something on third down, how about him buying some time outside of the pocket, waiting for someone to come open? And when he did, he put it on him for a big play and a first down. There goes a deep ball in zone. And this is intercepted, but they'll say out of bounds. So very close to a turnover there in the end zone. Throwing again is Fields. Forced out to his left. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. The last drive, remember, a similar situation. He forced the ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. Don't make something worse than what it was. On first down, Fields. Eluding the pressure right. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Tyus Bowser able to record his fifth sack of the season. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Meanwhile, Fields throw pulled in by Robinson here. They get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes these quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence that borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some dutch. Yeah, especially maybe want to look at some safer routes after the interception he had that ended their last drive. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. This one caught by his tight end, Andrews. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Throwing is Jackson. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Defensively, celebration time because they finally forced an incompletion. He was perfect throwing the ball to that point. Yeah, but from his viewpoint, they didn't force the incompletion. He just missed. That's how hot he is right now, and that's how he wants to continue to throw the ball. To throw again on second down. Jackson, they'll set up the screen for Freeman. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Third and two. Here's Jackson. He's got Freeman here. It's complete. 
And they move this all the way down to the nine. A big connection on that one. 35 yards. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Here's first and goal, and gosh, points here. A chance maybe to put this thing away before halftime. Here's Jackson to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Nifty running there, but it'll come on what should be the final play of half number one. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things starting to get interesting in this final weekend before Thanksgiving. So let's see what's going on around the NFL. We start with two teams who are only about 90 miles apart as the crow flies, Motown versus Rock and Roll. Detroit heading east and over Lake Erie to take on Cleveland. And in the late stages of the first half, it's the Lions who are out in front. The Lions trying to hold on and claim victory. From there, we head over to MetLife Stadium to check in on the Jets. And right now, they have the lead over the visiting Dolphins. Elijah Moore, two touchdown catches on the afternoon. Lastly, let's head up to the Twin Cities to check in on the Vikings at home in Minneapolis. And they trail that one over the visiting Green Bay Packers. Randall Cobb, a touchdown reception. Next, a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Ravens. And there were a few factors as to why they built this good size advantage, but the rushing numbers were not all that amazing. We'll see if they can pick it up in the second half. Meanwhile, for the Bears, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. These two teams currently going over their final halftime adjustments. We are just about set to get back to it in the second half. And for the call, let's go back to Soldier Field and Brandon God. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. Jakeem Grant now to return. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, called it the 26. And the Bears offense set to go to begin the third quarter. And right out of the gate, they face what you'd think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start clawing back, they've got to start putting a little pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. Third quarter starting with a run from Montgomery. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Tackle made there by Tony Jefferson. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Read option, here's Montgomery. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. And they are going for it. Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Well, it all came together on that one, didn't it? Big time throw on four. Now that had to feel good, didn't it? Taking that type of a gamble there and making it pay off. What a throw. And tough as a receiver because no matter how perfect the pass, you know it's fourth down and you got to convert. A little bit of extra. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Calais Campbell in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. After the sack on first down, Fields. Trying to get it to Robinson, and it's intercepted. Anthony Averett picks it, and he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. 
Now we'll get an injury timeout here, and uh-oh, that is Justin Fields having some troubles down there. We'll check on his status when we get back. After the interception, here's Jackson. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Roquan Smith able to get him down behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of a yard to try again after the sack. Jackson looking left side. Andrews with it complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Lamar Jackson, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Ravens turn that interception into a touchdown. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now 21 to nothing. The drive there only spanning three plays, and it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. On the return from his end zone is Grant. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, still a good return. They'll start the drive right around the 37. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far and never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Tyus Bowser in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. Normally, we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this with both of these guys running the ball well? Yeah, they mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks <laughs> have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Bears are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. He continues to show at this level that he can not only pass for touchdowns, he can run for touchdowns. Not the first time we've seen this because this young guy, he really makes it happen. So what that tells me is the book on him has to change. You've got to now plan for those legs as well as him throwing the football. So they're able to throw it in for the two-point conversion. Sometimes that can be a risky play, but they got it. Yeah, you always have to be careful here because if you do get it intercepted, it's returned by the defense. That's two points for them, but he identified an open target and put it right on him. Now after the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and 10. They go play action with Jackson. 
And that's incomplete. But listen, when you've got the lead, there's absolutely no sense trying to fit a ball in where you shouldn't. You can see the coaching in his head taking place on that play because he saw he had a receiver in the area. He just put it well over his head, out of harm's way. And he stopped immediately there. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. On third down, Jackson. Throw right side is complete to Andrews, his tight end. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. Here's Sam Cook now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt. And the Bears take over. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Now a first down throw, Fields. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And second down. the incomplete pass here they go again second and ten from the 25 here's fields buying time to his left and yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. so many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play looks like that discipline came to the front there didn't it they were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running now fields Robinson's got it, and he's going to come up a bit short. He needed to get to the 35 for the first, but he only makes it to the 34. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. And not much running room, down to the 32. That's a nice job there defensively, being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on it before he could get much out of it. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. Blitz coming and down he goes. Akeem Hicks at 6'5", 332, finds his way home for the sack. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away from pretty good yardage, and that time they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. From the gun, Jackson. Gets it off to Freeman. And here he'll be brought down a little oh, shy of the 35 at the 36. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from 53. 
And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will swell the lead to 16. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx it. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. So now Fields and the Bears down by 16. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go. They've won three in a row, but they've got work to do if they want to get a fourth in a row as they come up on first down, escaping the pressure right. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. Late in the game, defense trying to avoid a big play. He's able to work out of the passing game, turn it into a run, pick up the first, and stop the clock as well. And you know in this situation, everything is sped up. The intensity, the thinking, everyone's movement. But for a quarterback, he has to continue to be what we call flatliner. Level in everything he does and read the clock, feel it in the pocket, and go at the appropriate time. A big play that time through the air. 36 yards. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Fields throw pulled in by Robinson here. Touchdown, Bears! Allen Robinson, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Bears cut into that lead. And boy, CD, it's one thing to watch a great run, but when it's a great run with broken contact, it's like a cherry on top. That was a nice play. Yeah, and that's a run born out of ferociousness. He took on that initial contact and in his mind just screamed, out of my way, and kept right on going and wound up turning it into a big play. They'll look to throw. It's caught at the one. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A very pivotal two-point try that does not go their way. Now it's a big uphill battle for the rest of the fourth quarter. The attempt was to try and make it a one-score game, right? Touchdown, get two, and now you've tied it up. Instead, they don't get it. Still down ten. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. They'll eat some clock with Freeman. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Again, they'll run with Freeman. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Throwing now is Jackson. He finds his man complete. That's Freeman. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Jackson fakes the give and keeps it. First down and more for Jackson. The 30, 10, and all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Well, I mean, Lamar Jackson, what more can we say at this point? He is a living, breathing highlight reel. And go ahead and tack on that last play to the list of big ones by number eight. And how about the situation that we're in right now? Because this is the fourth quarter. So you know there's some tired legs out there on defense and probably some tired minds as well trying to chase guys around for four quarters. But this is where conditioning, athleticism, that separates the good bats from the great bats. And that was an A-plus effort right there. And he covered a lot of ground on that one, as evidenced by the final total there on Next Gen Stats. On to the field now come the Bears. They were coming off the extra week of rest, but this team started sluggish, and it really didn't get any better from there. And trailing big here in this fourth quarter. Man open is Robinson. 
And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. On first down, it's Fields. He's going to let it fly. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. And he's got his man. That's Robinson. Touchdown, Bears. Allen Robinson with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Bears have got it back to a two score game here in the fourth. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. They'll try and throw for it. And the Bears are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. So they elect to pass there on the two-point try. Sometimes can prove risky there and work down. Yeah, and I love how you bring up that it can prove risky because if you get it intercepted and they return it, that's two points for the defense, but not on that play. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And I tell you what, one thing that you and I featured as a storyline was that they were facing the NFL's number one defense coming in, and they really took it right to them. Yeah, they didn't blink, did they? And instead of just saying to themselves, let's make sure that we minimize our mistakes and try and play a conservative type game, they attacked right from the beginning. Said, we gotta go after these guys. I think sometimes you take the number one rated defense by surprise when you do that. So for Baltimore, it's an important win in terms of staying in the postseason race as they move to six and four. And they'll return home next week to take on the Cleveland Browns. Meanwhile, for the Bears, they suffered just their second loss as they drop to eight and two now on the year. 